Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Botanical Beauties, The Rose. So now, what did I all finish off? I pretty much finished outlining the rose and I stitched into the, I guess, the base of the rose deep into it to try and get a little bit of um, dark and light. I was going to move on to the leaves today, but then I thought, hmm, what else could I do to my rose? I haven't looked at it for a few days. And um, I thought maybe a few beads. Now, I picked up this pack of beads uh, a couple months ago. And they were from Spotlight. Um, and there's some colours down here in the red that I think might just be worth having a little play with. So... I don't want to go too overboard with the beads because the other pieces, beads are sort of just, just there. Um, so that's the plan. I'm hoping to sort of see what I can achieve with just a bit of bling. So hope you're all well. Hope you've all settled down with something to stitch or crochet or knit or whatever it is you're doing. Let's have a little bit of a, a decent knot is what I'm trying to achieve here. Okay. Oh gosh, these things are going to go flying everywhere. Let me just move out of the way some of the obstacles that could cause me trouble. Because if I recall, there's a tray sitting over them. Oh no. Gosh, they're even looser than I thought they might be. Oh, goodness me. So I'm thinking a bit of a mix between those two. Let's have a little look. <clears throat> now, I'm thinking I'll focus um, down in the center here like I did with that other stitch. For now, anyway. Oh, goodness. I'm going to need a better knot. I've been using quilters knots for ages, so I'm going to have to try and do the old lick the finger job <laughs> and roll it. My childhood learnings. Now it's come unthreaded. Gee, this is a good start. Just don't knock the beads over girl okay just do a couple anchoring stitches i hope the light's okay it's sort of <clears throat> mid-afternoon and i've been wanting to get in here and do a video but i started watching um what's it i'm on binge and i'm watching the series with Julianne Moore. Gosh, I can't even remember the name of it. I don't even think I took much notice. I just saw she was in it. It's around 1615. King James, he's a Scottish king. He's ruling England. And she is positioning herself, like so many, in the royal court to draw favour for her children. Isn't that just the classic, classic story? It's pretty good. I'm not sure how close it is to history, but um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Each episode's about 45 minutes and I sat down and that was the end of me. I did a little bit of stitching on uh, the autumn project and I thought, well, that's to the point where I really need to go and film. But I kept stitching and I'm like, no, well, now I really, really need to film. Otherwise, I'm just scooting ahead. And then I thought, well, I also need to film leaves. But I'm thinking my rose could just do with a little bit more sparkle. So, and that's how this came to be. You start off with the best intentions and why aren't you going through there? And then you're suddenly heading down another 
another task. It's all good. When I'm finished this, I will <clears throat> most likely film an episode of the autumn project. And then I'll have a bit of homework. And I can go back to my series is the plan. So what are you guys all up to? Have you got any good series for me to watch? I haven't watched a lot of TV over the last month, so I have a feeling I'm a little bit behind in some of the latest releases. So sort of looking forward to a little bit of downtime, a little bit of stitching, but need some homework. So the plan is, I wonder if those darker red ones would work. Uh, lighter, sorry, not darker. As we move out of the rose. Yes, I like that. Probably do with a smaller. What happened there? Lost it. <clears throat> I must have come up through the same hole. Yeah, I did. Could probably do it with some tiny itty bitty beads. These are big. Just to soften, soften the look. What size are these? Three mil. Just don't know if I've got any. Don't go in there, that's just gonna upset me. One red bead sitting in amongst the pink beads. I wonder if I do. Use your words, Corinne, not just have your thoughts to yourself. I just glanced across the table and saw some ribbon that I've got sitting aside for filming the autumn one, the autumn panel. And I'm wondering if I could pinch a little bit of the red and put some little French knots through this. That'd be something a little bit interesting. Might just get another one of those. Or do I stay with the beads? You see the beads sort of drifting along the baseline of that stitching. Uh, see, I, I no, I won't do ribbon because I haven't used ribbon anywhere on this thing, I don't think. No, so don't be going introducing a brand new medium now, girl. So forget about that thought. This is a very pretty pack of beads. Look at that. I think I picked up three that day and they were like cool tones, warm tones. And then I think from memory, my needle's a bit too big for some of these. Um, it was metallic, if I recall. Not bad mixes, especially if you guys are starting out and you're building your stash of bits and bobs for projects. This is a really good way to get you started. You sort of need a, a bit of a mix of bead sizes. I, I think, I sort of think that maybe a smaller bead to soften bigger beads. And I'd even go bigger beads, again, three sizes. Tends to be how I shop beads. Yeah, that's good. Let's just put a little bit of interest through the base of this rose. I want it to be quite light. Um, around the edges of the rose. Like up through here, just lines. A hint. Which 
Okay. Might leave it at that. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. It just puts that little bit of something something. Well, that took all of 10 minutes to do. I'm thinking we move on to the leaves. I don't think there's much else I want to do to the rows. If ribbon was involved, I would be tempted to do some French knots. Let's get this closed up before there's trouble. Yeah, like I was thinking if there was ribbon involved, I'd do some little French knots. Um, let me just have a glance through the threads. Maybe that's not such a bad idea. But what would I use? What would we use? So just looking through here. What could we use to complement it? Everything's very blendy. Do I? Do something like a. Let's have a look at this. Okay, we were doing leaves. Now we're going off on another tangent. Just feel like I could play a little bit more. Let's get a little bit of this. It's like a port wine. Wonderful. Very pretty colour. I wonder if I was just to do some French knots in here or maybe just some colonial knots. Let's see if they hold. No, they're too, too small. I think I need more of a, a bulbous. <clears throat> That's better. You guys can probably barely see it. It's tricky sometimes to show you what's happening on a piece when it's all sort of similar tones. Do I follow that line? I'm thinking of going out there with these knots too. So they get away from the centre there a little and it looks like it's more of a feature two, three. Yeah, I like this. Uh, maybe we won't get to leaves today. <laughs> maybe we just play with a few French knots. That'd be one, two, three. I'm doing three wraps. I'm going to jump over to there. I won't create any new lines and I don't think I'll connect any red lines of stitch that are already in place. I think I'll just nestle them into whatever's there. Yeah, so it's sort of making it look a little bit more um, bumpy. <laughs> There's the technical speech. It's making it more, look more ruffled because these little knots are sitting on a line of colour already. Yeah, I like that. So it's taking the thought that I had this became unthreaded. The thought I had to um, use some ribbon to get a little bit of texture and using pearl cotton instead, still keeping it fine. It's a different color red. It probably doesn't look like much on the camera. See those little 
just raised it nicely. I want to give you a bit of an angle. Yeah, see that? So we're getting a bit of a, a structure to the rose. I might just end that off. And grab another piece because what I might do is go to the opposite side of the rose now. I'm thinking up here. That's really neat. I like that. Don't think I've ever done that before. I'm just going to scoot to the inside of that line now. It's creating a little bit of detail. Gee, now here I thought the rose was finished, but no. line right down. One, two, three. Ah, oh, those hands. There we go. I like to how the paint has turned out. It's just a, you know, a drizzle. Yeah, I really like that. I feel like I'm finally achieving more of an ethereal look to the piece. Be interesting to see how these work up for me um, now that I've sort of, I think, found my groove. Will they be different to what I did over here? This was a little trickier because I did have the lady before me doing some work. So, you know, it's sort of paying homage to her work as well. Yeah, I like that. Well, that's a bit special. Where else can I put some? Okay, let's have a little look. I don't want to go too, too heavy. Maybe I'll leave it at that. Just a bit of a swish there and a swish there. I might, you know. I'm thinking, do we do any on the bud? Yeah, of course we've got to do some on the bud. Just a couple. Just to keep, keep it uniformed. Okay, maybe I stitch into the bud a bit. Maybe I leave. See the this is a bit different because the petals are open and they're you know in all their bloom. These are still tight and compact. To put lumps and bumps there, I don't know. Feeling like it's not quite true to the. So I'm thinking instead, let's stitch a bit of this 
down into what I've already stitched just to add another tone. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it, love it, love it. It's helped blend paint to thread a little bit. Not that there was a problem. <clears throat> and I was pretty happy with the the um, look. But this will just add a little bit more interest into this shadowy part of the... the amazing and you just pick up that extra color and give it a little bit extra okay so I might go to the top of that bud and just a couple stitches I don't want to lose that softness up there but I think we could sneak a little bit extra color tone in yeah that's really made that a little bit more pronounced yeah I like that yeah okay so now Let's go have a look at the other bud. It's all well and good doing this fancy quilters knot that I've learned in the last six months. There's always this little bit of waste. Then I've got to come back through and just, you know, occasionally trim off that little bit of waste because it gets in the way. Then I think, well, all those little bits, do they add up to a skein of thread? Am I being too miserly? <laughs> Am I overthinking it? Most probably. So this little guy, we'll just stitch. Down into there. Gosh, I'm tempted to pull the ribbon out. You can imagine the, the base and up through there in ribbons. But no, can always do another rose another day and bring ribbons into it. Okay. sort of over stitching a little bit too yeah there's not a lot of space to lay a stitch but I still want that swoosh of that darker red I'm just stitching over the top of what I've already stitched now let's call the red done all right well, that's a good scrap for the corner of the edge I'm pretty sure I showed you this episodes ago, but all my little orts from this project are going on to the edge somewhere. There's no rhyme or reason. See, just in there. So we just pick a spot, any spot. And where that crocheting has gone, used those little perforated holes that are often on these pieces. I'm just using that little spot to use my oort, just as a little pop of color. Whether I do the whole thing, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. It's just little, little morsels. I need a bigger eye on this thread technically, making it harder than what I need to. There you go. So it's just a little collection 
of random threads from the project, all my little orts. I don't think it'll circumnavigate. It'll be just little spots where, see that one I need to finish off, just little spots where I've noted the colour nearby. That's good, so I just keep going until I run out. I'm pushing my luck now. I might thread this again if I can. One more stitch to the back and then I can. Gosh, got myself in quite a pickle now, haven't I? Get it to the back. And then just weave it back on itself. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so that makes good use of that little oort. Alrighty. So let's have a look at green. Now, I do have a few greens put aside here. Keep that red in there because it's pretty. Um, probably more that colour, but it's probably, to be honest, a combination of a few I want them to be very olive. Let's have a play with this guy. These are one of these skeins that are pre-cut. So for every one I pull out, I'm going to get two threads. And before I make a hang of a mess, I just pop it back into its loose knot. Cut myself two threads. How are we going to do this? Probably could do with a bigger eye. I picked that one up to do a bit of beading. There we go. We've got a cruel needle here. This will be have a nice, nice big eye to take that wool. I tend to cut my wool shorter than normal threads because Wool is delicate and dragging through layers of fabric just starts to break it down. It starts getting weak. Um, admittedly, there's not as much, you know, in this one as in thicknesses of fabrics. I think I'll just do the good old short and long stitch. I don't want to cover my paint. So I'm just going to sneak around in here with a few stitches, I think. So I don't want to overdo it. Yep, I think that's good. Maybe all the dark areas gets a few little stitches. Yep. Drop down that stem a little bit. I'm just going to follow the line. I am covering paint here, so just back away from some of those painted zones, girls. Otherwise, you're going to end up just covering everything. And what's the point then of applying paint? So it's sort of finding that happy medium. good. Might scoot to this side of the branch so that we're on the underside. Nice long stitch. 
stitches scooting down that branch. Jumping every so often. Might have to leave that there and then pick it up. When I take the hoop off, pick this thread back up and use it until it runs out further down. So I'll leave that. You looked up at the, I'm just looking up at the TV screen and I don't really think I've shown you much there. It's very blendy. Let's go back up there and maybe work those little leaves. Follow the shape of the leaf. Try not to cover too much of the black ink. Yeah, I think that's all I need. You can always come back if you look at it and go, no, be ow, be braver and go again. I'd, I'd rather do a little less and then rework an area than have to pull it out because I feel like I was a little heavy handed with my with my stitch and not always go into every corner to come back a little bit from the corner like keep it light there we go yeah so I might I wonder if I need any other colors with this or do I just work wool? Hmm. I like the rawness that this is creating. It's not shiny, it's, it's matte looking, you know, op not opaque is probably not the right word, but it doesn't look like it's competing with the rose. There you go, that's what I'm trying to say. It looks like it's just subtly sitting there. And I think I like that. And I think it's going to be a very lineal treatment. Unless I get to the, the base that's holding the rose up, then I can do a little bit of short stitch, long stitch. Those, those couple stitches there are actually bugging me a little bit. They look very blocky. I'll probably never ever notice it. No one will ever notice it when they look at the piece. But it, to me, it feels like they're very rectangular where I seem to feel that it looked better the moment I started this more lineal line. I might just do the little bud. I've only got a few stitches left in this. Jump over there. Instead of going up to the petal, I'll come from the base up, I think, and put the deep stitching down into the bottom of the stem. Yeah, that's good. How much have I got left? Can I scoot out along that edge? So this little leaf is really just cradling the bud. So to have this thicker wool is sitting right up there with the bud. Because remember I stitched twice into there. So I think it's sort of helping, helping hold the bud. If this was done with DMC cotton or pearl cotton, I think it would look less. Does that make sense? And it needs to be a little bit more substantial due to the thickness of the red stitching. Okay, do we want any other colors? So it's very blendy. I don't think it's gonna make much difference. Do we wanna bring in a lighter tone? Mm. 
No. Gosh, this is going to be very boring for everyone, isn't it? I think we need us to stay with this. Let the rose be. And just do highlight stitches in this. Maybe a bit of yellow could come in. Maybe that's... Sort of, maybe I'm just not in a spot where it would work. It's quite dark in here. Maybe I can be a bit braver out here and bring in some other colours. Let's, let's grab another yarn. How are we going for time? We've got a bit more time yet. What we might do, so I'll get my two strands. I think we've figured out this here. So it's just hit repeat there. The stems will be all long lineal threads. Let's have a play with a leaf. Maybe we can get another colour in there as light sort of bounces off those leaves a little bit. Okay. Start at the stem. And creep out. Try and keep it fairly structured because rose leaves do have quite distinctive veins in them when you have a, a look at them. So we might try and... Keep that feeling of structure. Might open up my stitches a little bit so they're not so dense through there. Just long stitches at angles working my way back up the leaf. Yep. Okay. So let's see if this paler colour does anything for us or it's just a, just take a little bit. Precious, precious, precious. So if there was a light bouncing on this, it would be on this little edge here and this little edge out here. So let's just start with maybe a little framing stitch. That's not even a word. I've just said that just to try and explain what's in my head. I'm going to frame out this leaf a little bit just to give the impression that there is a little bit of light sort of sneaking around there remember these rose petal uh, leaves have that little rigid look about them not quite thorny but I suppose it depends which rose you're looking at but I think just having that little so I've really reduced the size of my stitches too. And then I might jump up here. And just a hint of it on that top edge. Just so it feels like that leaf has bent over. line yeah I think that's going to work huh fantastic I get to add more colors 
yeah I like that so this Sue Spargo thread is just going to be like that flick of light bouncing around I wonder if it would work with the thorns just to highlight those little guys do we want to highlight the thorns How would we do it? Um, could we do just the one stitch maybe? That one definitely because it's so small. This one I might do too, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so there's a plan. So the next video, we've still got plenty of the month to go and I I will have finished my rows so what we might do is I can sneak up into this zone and start working some of these flowers that'll be a good way to finish the month the rose has gone quite quite quickly we bring that up to the camera I don't know if you can take a full view of that softer color it look it's brighter in real life but um, it's just put a pop of light on the leaves yeah really happy with that okay so I've got a little bit of time I might just pick up this spare piece of wool before it gets lost in the the abyss need my little tray so that's going to happen do I need a pin cushion no I don't think so maybe there's still one I need scissors like I could do a little bit more green up here just to tell the story a little there you go that's better doesn't look so cartoony now in that top corner Alrighty, maybe I pick another stem and work my way down until it runs out. Oh, let's do this little guy. I'd say I will have enough to finish finish him. Yeah, that's good. down to where it joins. I've got a little bit of thread left. Maybe I can work my way back up to that stem. Yeah. I tell you, when you think of all those royals in the past, in here in history, and I guess in many countries, but I'm probably more focused on British royals, Scottish royals, you know, all of the ones through Europe around the 1600s, 1700s. They are so influenced by people within their court, aren't they? How history is controlled by people wanting to get what they can out of those those royals you know it's just I'm sure it happens in all 
all royal scenarios in many countries, but um, I wonder if it still happens these days. It just seems that these kings and queens are surrounded by their court and within their court are a pack of barracudas. I think I might leave it at that. So that guy will continue on. That guy and that one are finished. So I just have to start in. Yeah, it's not worth fucking around with that. I just have to start back in here, pick up him. How are we going for time? We've got a few minutes. Let's cut another green thread. And we might, I can use that. So we'll pop him in there. What I might do is catch that leaf and bring him down. I'll have to move my hoop. I've got a lot of space here, so without upsetting those beads, I should be able to reposition the hoop into here and that'll give me probably the rest of these leaves so that I can access them then. So I'm just going to scoot my way down here. There's another little thorn that could have a touch of that pale of blue and I have some spare pale of blue, goodness sakes. Green, where did I get pale blue from? dog in the distance. My pair of galahs are replying. I'd love to know what they say. Bad guy in the street, bad guy in the street. That's just the posty. I might finish. Now I'll jump across to there and maybe, oh this is tricky, maybe I can Stitch my way back away from the frame. Yeah. And catch this little guy and this little guy and join them into the And we've got enough to do his veins. Don't go over the paint. We want to see the paint. I might have to move the hoop. Oh, no. oh come unthreaded. I'll definitely need to remove the hoop to finish this little leaf and to knot it off properly because I'm getting right up onto that. I might just leave it at that and catch him when I get there. Okay. And the remaining thread, how are we going? Oh, we got plenty of time. Let's just thread that needle again for the umpteenth time. Let's focus on this guy. working within these sketchy sort of images. When you do thread painting on fabric, you've got these defined areas, but when it's more loose like this, I guess it's probably a little more relaxing because you're not having to do the dense stitching that paint, um, thread painting can be. It's sort of a little bit more I keep using that word ethereal and it's the inspiration of that 
tablecloth that was in Fleur Wood's book from her great grandmother. It might even be two greats. Gosh, I'm going to have to look all that up. The book's gone up to Barham and it's just not with me. So I do apologise if I'm getting my facts wrong there. I shall confirm when I meet that book again. Okay. I'm following the veins of the leaves. And then I'll use the um, softer green to come back through and define it a little more. Yeah, really good. Happy, happy with my rose. Definitely was one that I had trepidation about. I don't know what, don't really, what, was it, what am I trying to say? I know people say, oh, the rose, it's pretty easy to draw, but I don't know. It's just one of those flowers that you've got to get it right because otherwise it just doesn't look like a rose. Oops. There we go. Lovely. Oh, I'm just going to run out of thread, aren't I? enough. Well, I'm going to end this thread off now and I'm going to say goodbye. I feel like I need a couple more stitches back down there, mind you. Let's see if I can sneak. Yeah, just needed something in that gap. Don't lose the thread, don't lose the thread. All right, thanks for joining me again, guys, and thanks so much for your patience and taking the time to spend some time with me. Okay. I think it'd be time to relocate the hoop. Maybe we just quickly do that. And then I know I'm ready to roll. I really enjoy this hoop and I've had it a long time. I don't know if they're even still available. I got it when I was working in a little craft shop. I was quite young. I think it was only about 20, 21. I had a part-time job in a little craft shop over near one of our Brisbane hospitals. And um, the cross stitch was big and folk art. And this hoop I purchased then, I don't want to pull that too much. I don't want to break that. I purchased it then and it, oh gosh I've used it and used it and used it it's just a little ripper and I love how this is just so easy to put into place if I ever saw a, a bigger version of it I'd probably grab it I think I might just thread this needle up and we've got time I just want to use the last of this thread and scooch my way to the end of this little leaf Sparingly. tidies that loose end up how are we are for time i know i said goodbye but look i can't be leaving this with dangly bits here so let's just finish these off a couple little stitches as we make 
make our way down here and I'm placing the green on the bottom side of that branch, like the dark side of it, as if there was a shadow. The sun's up here and it's the, the bottom side. See, I'm trying to make it look like I know what I'm doing with my stitches and where I place them, but end of the day, it is quite random. But occasionally those thoughts pop into my head that you really should be looking at shade and where's your light source coming from? You know, all the theory you learned back in the day. I might end that off because I'm getting a little bit scant there. That little piece. Alrighty. Once again, thanks for joining me, guys. You know how it is. I say goodbye and then another 10 minutes goes by because I just can't put it down. But I've run out of thread and I would have to go digging to get more. So there we go. All right, I will catch you next week. And my leaves will be done, my rows will be done, and then I think we might play in here and match up some of these tones and yeah, be beautiful. All right, guys, have a lovely day and um, enjoy yourselves. Bye.